In this video, we're going to be talking about something called equivalent units. Uh, and in particular, we're going to be discussing the cost per equivalent unit and how you'd go about calculating that. And for those of you who kind of already got a background in this area of cost accounting, uh, we're actually going to be discussing the weighted average method. There's also a FIFO method that we'll have another video on. So basic concept between this whole idea of equivalent units is that if we transfer during a period, if we, if we transfer out of our WIP account, our work in process, so let's just say WIP, we transfer out, let's say 25,000 uh, units, and then we have, we have 10,000 partially completed units. So this is partially complete. And let's say that these 10,000 here are about 25% done. 25% complete, 25% done. So what we could say is, okay, well, we've kind of got something here in our WIP account. Even though these aren't, aren't finished, uh, we can say, well, they're a quarter of the way through. So what we'll do is we'll take this 25% and multiply it by the 10,000, uh, and that'll tell us that we have 2,500 equivalent units. And I'll just abbreviate that EU. Or, well, put EU, equivalent units, 2,500, basically 10,000 times 25%. So we've got 2,500 equivalent units that are actually in the WIP account at the end. So now we could say, well, the total, and we'll, so we'll call this e, uh, equivalent units of production, EU of production for that period, we'll say is that the 25,000 that were transferred out plus the 2,500 that remain at the end that are equivalent units, we add those two together, and that gives us 27,500 equivalent units of production. Now, it, it gets a little more complex than this, but this is the kind of the basic conceptual framework uh, behind what we're talking about with this idea of equivalent units. And then we can go ahead and, and actually look at the cost, uh, the cost per equivalent unit. Uh, uh, toward the end, that's ultimately what the goal is we're shooting for in this this video. So let's take an example. Let's say that we have an, an automotive plant, and we're going to look at the assembly department, right? So we're just focusing on one department here. Uh, so and again, this is assuming that the firm was doing like process costing, and so you have a WIP account uh, for each department. You'd have work in process for for the assembly department. Now I've I've got. Uh, some of the numbers filled in already, some given information, uh, just just for so I'm not sitting here for an hour here because I know you'd fall asleep by then. Um, I sure would. So we got our beginning work and process is 50,000, and then we're going to start uh, into production uh, 700,000 units, right? And then the total that we'll have during the period that, that, are, that are, are kind of being worked on at some point or somehow go through this WIP account in the assembly department, that total is going to be 750000 Then we're going to transfer out from our WIP account, either it could be to another department, could be to finished goods. They're going to be coming out of the assembly department. We're going to be transferring out 600000 And so that's going to leave us with an ending WIP of 150,000. So that's these are kind of like the background numbers here and now let's get to this idea of equivalent units. So what do we need to know first before we can come up with this this equivalent unit figure? Uh, and we're going to be doing it for direct materials, direct labor and manufacturing overhead as you you can see there. Uh, what we need to know is what percent complete uh, these 150,000 uh, units that we have here how much of the um, uh, that's going to be incurred in ter terms of direct materials, for example, on this 150,000? How complete is it? Have we spent half what we're going to spend on, on on direct materials already? Have we pumped in half, um, or have we only in, put in a quarter? And and so w we need to know those things. And let's say that uh, we'll say 50% will be the direct materials. So where where should I put this? We'll put. Uh, I'll put a little 50 percent there uh, but I so what we do is we take that 50 percent we're saying okay regarding this 150,000 we've already pumped in uh, 50 percent of the direct materials right they're already in pro they're good to go and so we take that 150,000 multiply it by 50 percent and that's going to give us 75,000 and so we put 75,000 here and now we can kind of kind of disregard that number now because we've already dealt with it so now direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Let's say for each one, 
uh, that it's, it's going to be 25 percent and a lot of times you'll actually see direct labor and, and manufacturing overhead uh, just lumped and it'll just say conversion and if you kind of remember from our video on prime costs and conversion costs uh, the direct materials and direct labor when those are together those are called prime costs and when you add direct labor and manufacturing overhead those are conversion costs and so a lot of times you know people or firms will apply manufacturing overhead based on direct labor hours that'll be the cost driver anyways so in any case we're just going to say here that they're both uh, have 25 percent uh, in in their ending uh, in terms of when we're thinking about the equivalent units and, and the amount of direct labor that's already been kind of uh, you know pumped into this this hundred and fifty thousand here so we've already incurred 25 percent so with respect to this hundred fifty thousand here it's 25 percent complete in terms of the direct labor that's going to need to to go on and be attached to that so we just take the 25 percent and we multiply it by this 150,000. Uh, and that's going to give us 37,500. Okay, and it's going to be here we've got the same thing for manufacturing overhead because we're, it's also, again, it's 25% it's of this, right? So now, and I'll just kind of you know, cross out these percentages, is you know, now we've, we've got the numbers, so we don't need to think about those percentages for the, for the moment. Uh, now we can go ahead and say, all right. What, let, let's add these up to get our equivalent units. And so here, let me change colors. Uh, for direct materials, we'll have 675,000. And I'm just taking the sum of these two numbers right here, just adding the 600 and the 75. And then for direct labor, we'll have 637,500. And then for manufacturing overhead, we'll have 637,500. Now these are the equivalent units, right? That's what we're, we're dealing in here. Uh, you know, we've accounted for the fact that we have some partially completed units in our ending uh, work and process account, and we're going and saying, okay, how complete are we with respect to direct materials? How complete are we with respect to direct labor and overhead? And and this this is telling us right here uh, how complete we are. So, and then of course, uh, don't let the, these numbers throw you off here. These six hundred thousand. Uh, that's just basically a function of saying that okay, we transferred out six hundred thousand during the period. Uh, so obviously, those units were a hundred percent complete. So a hundred percent of six hundred thousand is six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand for for everything. So that's just kind of uh, a functional thing that you probably don't even really need to concern yourself with. That the only reason we need the six hundred thousand uh, is so you add it uh, to the seventy-five. So you basically have the, tr the amount transferred out. Uh, and then the partially completed, right? We have to apply the percentages because we can't just run this 150,000 across here uh, because these things are all, these are partial uh, completed units. So now when we think of our cost per equivalent unit, which is what we're going to get to next, we're actually going to use these numbers that we calculated here, right? Remember, those are our equivalent units, and we're going to use them to get the cost per equivalent unit. So what we're going to do it's so actually, uh, I, I don't know if you'll, you'll be able to see, well, here we go. We've got the equivalent units right here in our, our new table. And again, I had to kind of you know, put in some given information to save time. Uh, we've got our beginning work in process, a, a total uh, for the period, direct material, and so forth. We have all these numbers. So now we've got kind of the beginning, uh, what was started in production during the period, and then just the sum of those two numbers, right? Um, so now the equivalent units... We have to calculate uh, this part, or I should you know, put a little circle there. We have to calculate that. That's what we just did. So I'm just going to draw a little little arrow here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this. Let's see. I'm going to bring it down just so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that bottom line there. And this is, this is why we just calculated those numbers. We're just going to pop them right in. And let me choose a, a different color here. Let's go with red. Um, and so we're going to have... Uh, 675,000 for direct materials, and then we're going to have 637,500 for direct labor. And again, that's just this number right up here that we just finished calculating. And then for manufacturing overhead, we're going to have 637,500. Now, now that we know the equivalent units, right, and we've actually gone to the trouble and said, okay, what were our costs? Right in terms of direct materials, direct labor, and so forth, we we had the beginning whip, and then what was started in production during the period, and then you know the total cost. Right now, and again, I should just bear 
bear, bear mentioning is bears mentioning here that we're using the weighted average method and kind of I won't go into all the details of that but the idea is that some of what's included here in our total cost uh, was actually things that were started in production in a previous period so that we've got this beginning whip and that includes some things from from last year or the year before or so and so on uh, so we're basically taking all of this and that's going to be our total cost now if we're using another method called the FIFO method then we would just drill down and specifically look at the uh, specific year in question instead of including things but potentially from prior periods but in any event we're using the weighted average method and so we've got our total cost right here for direct materials direct labor manufacturing overhead and we now know the equivalent units because we just calculated that above based on our percentages of completion for materials labor and overhead and now we just do some simple division here we just say okay we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take these numbers and divide them by these numbers so we'll start out first uh, to get our cost per equivalent unit uh, for the direct materials for right here we'll just take this 2675 or well I should say two million six hundred and seventy five thousand and divide it by six hundred and seventy five thousand and that's going to give us our cost per equivalent unit with respect to the direct materials and if you calculate that out that's going to be three dollars and ninety six cents rounded uh, now we just do the same thing uh, for direct labor to get our cost per equivalent unit with respect to direct labor we just take one million seventy five thousand and then we divide that by 637,500 which we calculated in the table above that's going to give us a dollar 69 okay and then and again that's rounded so it might be a little it's not precise um, so we take for the manufacturing overhead we take the 2,150,000 and then we divide that by the equivalent units we calculated above which is 637,500 and that's going to give us three dollars and thirty seven cents 